General Motors is undergoing a seismic shift aiming to phase out all gas powered vehicles by 2035. But the recent recall of its all electric Chevy Bolt, as well as some, some supply chain constraints, raising concerns about whether that timeline it could be in jeopardy. Let's bring in Geraldine Barnuevo. She is GM Senior Manager of Environmental Strategies and Sustainability. Geraldine, it's great to have you on today. Uh, let's look at the numbers here. 2035, the big goal GM has set out, 30 new EVs by then. Um, some would argue that GM's kind of, you know, hit some stumbles out of the gate here with the most recent recall of the Chevy Bolt. This comes as the company's trying to convince Americans to get on board with all EVs. Um, how do you build that trust with your customers to say this is the way of the future and this is the transition that needs to happen? Thank you, Akiko, and good afternoon. Well, GM is taking both inside and outside our fence lines uh, actions to reduce our own emissions and become more resilient. We started our upfront commitment to fight climate change in 2017 when we announced our vision for a zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congest congestion world. And this year, uh, we are advancing our zero emissions visions with a plan to become carbon neutral in our global products and operations by 2040. Um, that plan is aligned with our science-based uh, targets and this uh, ambition to uh, limit global reduction by 1.5 degree. As you mentioned, we have uh, this goal of putting uh, 30 EVs uh, in the road by 2025. And many of those EVs are, use our new proprietary uh, technology, the Ultium platform that will help us to really transform the future of mobility. I, I should, it's important to mention that the problem that we have with the Volt uh, EV is a manufacturing problem with the battery. The battery uh, is, we're working with our supplier LG Chem with whom we have partnered uh, in our joint venture to build the Ultium battery. But ultimately uh, the important thing to, um, be aware is that our yeah. new vehicles are going to be using this uh, Ultium battery, which is different to the one uh, being currently used uh, in our Bolt uh, EV products. So the message here from GM being that the problems you're having with the Bolt aren't necessarily indicative of the other EVs that are about to roll out. That is correct. Let's talk about some of those partnerships that you just mentioned, the partnership with LG Chem. You've got a few battery plants uh, in the works here. Um, how much of this 2035 goal is contingent on G GM being able to control the supply chain? Because as we've learned over the last year, one part, one hiccup could lead to a ripple effect in terms of delays and deadlines across the auto sector. Well, uh, the Ultium platform, uh, including the battery cells, the modules, and the packs were mostly designed and developed in-house. And it's the only EV technology that truly developed for a full-scale electric mobility. Uh, in, indeed, our Ultium platform, uh, we consider that our secret weapon uh, in the fight for high performance and also reduced cost, both which will increase the EV adoption. Um, the other differentiator about the Ultimum platform is that it's very versatile and flexible. So we, it will help us to quickly ramp up EV production and achieve economies of scale. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, and I mentioned before, uh, we, we will build our batteries at the Ultium LLC facilities in the US, which will give us a, you know, control over that manufacturing. We will bring our manufacturing expertise as GM with all the quality to manufacture uh, those, uh, those batteries. Uh, and we will mass produce Ultim battery cells for the electric vehicles in the US and create thousands of new jobs. So um, we have announced to our second generation Ultim, Ultim Chemistry uh, battery, uh -huh. which will deliver twice the energy with 60% uh, less cost than today's uh, chemistry. 
the vehicle itself, of course, is just one piece to a, a larger infrastructure that needs to build out in order for this low carbon transition to take effect. Can you talk a bit more about the conversations GM's having with the companies that are building out the charging stations with the cities that need to ensure that this is all in place so GM can go to the customers and say, look, uh, you don't have to go searching for a charging station. They are available um, in some areas that just don't have one right now, or they will be available. Yeah, charging infrastructure plays a major role in the mass market adoption of EVs. And for that reason, uh, we're working very close with companies like EVgo. Uh, we, we will expand, we have an agreement to expand the EV charging in the U.S., uh, by 2,700 fast charges in in, sub, in cities and suburbs uh, by the end of 2025. And I'm happy to inform uh, that we are way on our way to, um, we're, you know, on our way to achieve that goal. Uh, we will have around 500 fast charging stalls live by the end of 2025. So we also introduced the Ultimate Charge uh, 360, which is a holistic charging approach that integrates charging networks, GM, mm -hmm. vehicle, uh, mobile apps, and other products to simplify the overall charging experience. And we have signed agreements with seven major EV charging providers to leverage their charging data within the GM vehicle mobile app. What that is going to yeah. mean is that uh, the, the customer will, will have access to 60,000 charging blocks mm -hmm. throughout the U.S. and Canada. Geraldine Barnuevo, GM Senior Manager of Environmental Strategies and Sustainability. It's good to have you on the show today. I appreciate the time.